Welcome, my friends, to Know the Cause, the show you have popularized. I am your humbled host, and I thank you for watching and telling your friends. This is a show that talks about changing your lifestyle. Only this morning, I got up, I did my jog, my push-ups, my pull-ups, and so forth. And for a guy retirement age, I feel pretty good. So it should shock no one that the British Medical Journal publishes this. Eating five daily portions of fruits and vegetables lowers the risk of death from cardiovascular and other diseases eating five daily, but the average risk for death reduced 5% for each daily serving, 15% for three more vegetables. And Scott, our producer, asked a really relevant question here, and that was, what are you replacing that cucumber and broccoli sprout? You know, what are you replacing? Is it a, one of the fast dinners? Is it a fast food burger? Of course you're going to do better on fruits and vegetables. Folks, understand where we come from on this show. A farmer plants 10 seeds, only 8 of them sprout up because something in the soil, bacteria, fungus, may have eaten the two other seeds or they were bad seeds. But once you break through the soil, the germination process involves sun, photosynthesis, all that good stuff. Understand that these fruits and vegetables become antifungals. I think fungus is the cause of most disease in America and has been mostly overlooked. Change your lifestyle to change your health. Of course, all for the better. Thank you for joining us today, and away we go on Know the Call. thought we'd have a little fun today. Kristen Kahns and Kyle Drew, both Know the Cause correspondents, came in and we want to dispel or confirm some wives' tales. Even that itself, old wives' tales, what about young husbands' tales? You know, this is fascinating, old wives' tales, where did that come from? But look at some of these that Scott, our producer, put up, and I think they're excellent. Placing onions around the house will help fight the flu or bacteria. Have you, Kristen, have you heard? <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I'm thinking more the onions in the food might be a little better <laughs> around the house. Yeah. It's just going to make it smell funky. But your bathroom has never had the flu, correct? That's right. You have. That's right. Don't judge. None of the rooms in your house have ever had the flu. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. kind of interesting. I don't think. I, have you heard of putting garlic in a sock yeah. or something? Yeah. Before? Yeah. You wake up in the morning, you have the taste of Actually, garlic, but gets the gets in your gone. body though. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the next uh, next one is coconut oil pulling will detoxify the body and whiten tea. Yeah, well, I think I know the man who started this craze, and he's Doctor. a great, uh, good yeah, guy. Good great guy. Great guy. Yep. Um, but I don't like this. I think it's dumb. <laughs> Just telling. <laughs> and here's no, really, what they how did. How do you feel? About well, uh, there was a uh, there was a study that was done, an analysis where they took these people who were doing this oil pulling, had them spit into a container, and they analyzed what's in it. You, thought your job was bad. That's a bad job. Well, they took another group of people, had them do the same thing with water, not oil, but water. And it turns out the oil and the water saliva came out exactly the same, the same stuff in each. It's just sloshing and swishing and everything. A lot of people think that coconut, oh, I know, sorry. <laughs> Chris is about to gross know, yeah. out because, but the, the truth of the matter is coconut oil has a lot of fantastic properties, but I would just eat it. I wouldn't Pull it. Yep, right. exactly. Yeah, Don't makes, spit it out. Swap yeah, it, makes me know, gag. But. Okay, the next uh, one is a bar of soap placed between your bed sheets will calm your... You know, it's worth trying restless leg. I mean, <laughs> 85 cents? I'll try it. If I had restless leg, and I have seen videos of people with restless leg. Um, by the way, L-tryptophan and vitamin B6 seems to work very well for uh, that condition. L-tryptophan and vitamin B6. And, and maybe taking a hot bath with some uh, uh, salt. Yeah, you know, some Epsom with the salts. With the Epsom salt with the magnesium. wonder if soap used to be made out oh, of magnesium. Oh, well, when they used to make soap, there was magnesium in it. Magnesium is calming. And so it's possible that they put this magnesium bar in between the sheets, but I don't think it's, you know, caress or dove. Or <laughs> I'm just trying to think, too. A bed's big, and if you put it up by your head, is that going to rest, <laughs> right. you know, your right. restless leg? It so emanates to you. I love these. The one we're going to go to and you're going to do some work on today that I just love because I heard it forever, was Grandma's Chicken Noodle Soup. And we'll get to that one in a minute. That one begs so much science. If you, if you 
take it in a can, you know, that's one thing. If you make it the way grandma made, maybe another thing. Okay, we'll get to that one in a minute. Drinking a glass of warm milk before going to bed makes you fall asleep really quickly. Okay, grandpa didn't drink milk, but he heated up water and then he poured liquor. Uh, <laughs> he made a hot toddy. A hot toddy it's of it. totally different. And, he, and the glass, I could have been an alcoholic so easy. The glass, he, <laughs> and he put it down, he'd go to bed, and he's gone, you know, for like 10 hours. And I'd smell, Mark and I, my brother, and, oh, that smells good. You know, I wonder what this stuff is. Uh, milk, so tryptophan maybe? Yeah, that's what I think, but every time I've ever tried it, it never worked for me. I have no, I, my, my parents and everybody told me, you know, but it never worked for me. But people will say that when you heat up the milk, sometimes the tryptophan, but I don't know. I love essential oils, you know, when I'm, when I'm <laughs> trying, when I can't sleep or, you know, when I want to really relax, a little lavender just on the neck or your chest. So externally? Yes, with externally. The essential, okay. Yes, just I put it, yeah, on my neck, chest, and it just really helps relax me, my pillow. What do you think about <laughs> Kyle, though, a little Adderall? Maybe make it into a drink and take it down <laughs> you go to sleep. Okay, next one is uh, being out in the cold too long will give you a cold. That is absolutely false. Absolutely. I'm telling you folks, I'm living proof of that. You can bundle up, but if you had a lot of alcohol, a lot of grains, a lot of candy and so forth, you're more vulnerable to the cold than if you're out there half naked, okay? And I snow. think the biggest, you know, holidays are, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and that's when everyone flu gets sick. Flu season, yes. flu right. season, you know, and we <laughs> yes. dress up and we go outside. Okay, next one is this one. Oh, Kristen, I'm going to let you expound ah. on that because you have been a pro. Chicken noodle soup is all you need for a cold. Might be if it's the right chicken. Yes, if it's homemade, if it's the way grandma used to make it, which we're gonna show in the next segment, yeah. um, minus the noodles. Um, I guess you could use some zucchini, make some zucchini noodles, and you could have your chicken noodle soup. Mm. Um, but yeah, it has the, the gelatin and all the good um, cold fighting things. So. And you know, we talk grandma, right? This isn't auntie, this isn't mom. This is back when they had those big iron you know, they put a gallon or two of water in and throw a whole chicken in there, right? Yes. Everything in the chicken in there, the neck and so forth. And then they'd, over hours and hours of time, and you could smell it. This cooking. is not bouillon. Right, chicken, the bouillon right? cube. There's, there's no medicinal value oh, it to that. Oh. But, that's, <laughs> but, but that, you know, you know where I learned to do it this mm. way? It was a show that you hosted mm -hmm. 15 years ago, and Jordan Rubin was your guest. Know and, the bouillon. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the bouillon. No, the chicken neck. Yep. And it changed my life. This stuff changes your life, and thankfully we'll learn how By to do By the way, it. this is a good segue. Let's go into the kitchen and cook this and let you guys take a look at it. And then when you get back, you want to do more of these? Yeah. I love I it. I love this. Okay, don't go away. A whole lot more on today's Know the Cost. In um, the beginning of October of 2012, I was diagnosed with neuroendocrine carcinoma. Um, I was told I have a mass in the pancreas and that I had stage 3 metastasis in the liver. In November, I began the phase 1 diet as well as some supplements. And I used the infrared sauna, the far infrared sauna. And by January, all the masses have shrunk in half except for the pancreas. It has shrunk, it just hasn't shrunk in half yet. I've had anxiety for years, that's disappeared. I've had thinning hair, my hair started to grow back. Um, dry skin is going away. I've had nothing but wonderful results. Uh, don't make a hasty decision. Um, do your research. Start the phase one diet, and then find the supplements that are gonna work best for you. Take your antifungals, I've taken antifungals since. Are you looking for a way to increase your energy level? Exercise is actually a great way to do just that. It promotes better sleep quality, which provides you with more energy the day after you exercise. During physical activity, more blood gets to your brain, which means more oxygen is then absorbed by the brain. This increases mental awareness and energy levels. Many think of exercise as a key to weight loss, 
But the fact of the matter is, without proper diet and nutrition, exercise primarily helps to maintain weight, not lose it. Weight loss occurs when you're burning more calories than you're taking in. Physical activity also contributes to a better sense of well-being. We know that. Exercise causes chemical changes in your brain, which leads to increased self-esteem and self-control and enables you to even have more self-confidence. Exercise helps build a better you. So snacks are an imperative part of a healthy way of eating, especially the phase one diet. It helps to keep your blood sugar stable and it also just helps you from feeling deprived. My four favorite healthy, quick and easy snacks is number one, nuts and apples. You can do almond butter and slice up those apples. You can do just raw nuts and I always stick them in my purse and I always have a healthy snack that's quick and easy to go. Avocado and salsa. I love mashing up an avocado with some salsa that's made with apple cider vinegar. And then I take veggies and I use it as a dip. It's really delicious. And then smoothies. Smoothies, you can just do anything. Berries, your coconut milk, your greens, maybe some almond butter, quick and easy. And then deli meat, a healthy deli meat with hummus or an avocado is perfect lunch or snack. I think that was one of the best segments we've ever done. <laughs> Old wives' tales and what they mean today, what they must have meant a long time yeah. ago, and one of them was chicken noodle soup. Mm -hmm. And I think, Kyle, that you hit the nail right on the head. Bone stock. Mm. Grandma made it with bones in the soup and so forth. And of course, you and I couldn't do that, but Kristen can do that. <laughs> and so that's what we want to teach you right now. The reason for making it this way, Kristen, is what? Is so you can get all the gelatin and the good minerals, and it helps to heal the gut, helps inflammation. It's a perfect wow. accompaniment with phase one. And so mm -hmm. many people have tummy yes. you know, yep. problems in America today. Now, you just corrected me on this. I said, what do you use, tap water or something? And you said... <laughs> yeah, distilled water is what I like to use for these kinds of things because it does have a mineral pulling mm -hmm. action. Some people worry about it whenever you drink that kind. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, by the way, but that's a different story. But I think that that would be huge, especially to pull the minerals out of the kombu and the chicken, which you will talk about now, I think, right? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, perfect. So, um, how much do you, do you just? Uh, about a gallon. Okay. What, it's important to put the bones in, um, the, in the chicken parts in, and just cover them with water, and then a little. Well, I'll talk about that. But wait, wait a minute. Am I, I see, know. Am I seeing that right? Is that chicken giving you a thumbs <laughs> up? I'm telling you, honest that's to a, goodness. Look at the chicken's giving you a thumbs most up. Most people never see real chicken. Do they well, have fried <laughs> I didn't know they had fingernails. Yes. Wow. I know. So it's, that's the real thing. I have to tell you, it took me a long, long time. I've made bone broth for <laughs> yeah. probably seven years now. And uh. just since Emma Jane was born did I do this because she's drinking it now. And the reason, so you always want to use raw bones. When okay. you use the, you know, turkey after Thanksgiving that's already been cooked or chicken that's already been cooked, don't you, do don't, that. Right. you don't get as many of the minerals. It's still okay, but you're not getting all of the good stuff. Okay. So this is a chicken back with the neck and the feet. And as I said, I- The bones. So yeah, all, most of the bones yeah. are in the body. And, and that makes sense because of the marrow, you know, all the good Absolutely. nutrition yes. in the marrow and so yes. forth. So you would put a gallon of water in there, which so, is roughly- yeah, so I, what I do is I put the bones in first. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I put the chicken parts in first, and you want them to be dethawed if you're putting them into a slow cooker. Thank See, you. See, I'm just Kyle. blown away. They have fingernails. I know they have the fingernails. Do they have little chicken clippers? Uh. That's a whole other. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna steal yep. that. Then you want to just cover it with. Um, She's pregnant. With you some water. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I'm so excited. So, baby number thank two. Thank you. Yes, baby number two. Do you know yet if it's a boy or we girl? We don't. We find out in a few weeks, and we are just so excited. I'm happy for so. you, Brad. Thank That's you. Um, and then, as I always talk about constantly, the kombu, I put a piece of kombu you in. You like that. Yes, yeah. I love the kombu. It's like a multi-mineral to, um, to your food. And then the astragalus oh, as well. So you got the beef jerky and the tummy depressant. <laughs> yes. Both of those. So astragalus is for the immune system and then like a multi-mineral, it's going to just you help. You just put one You know, you can put a few. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. Um, Neither one changes the taste though. It, not at all. Yeah, does okay. not change the taste. So you put those in there. Okay. And then I like using fresh herbs. It seems to give a little better of a flavor, but you can use dried mm -hmm. herbs. Let me say, first of all, 
you don't have to do the herbs, you don't have to do the vegetables. You guys could do this at home. You take a pot, you don't have to have a slow cooker. You and I. You just take <laughs> the bone. So. You just take the bones in the water and a tablespoon of the apple cider vinegar mm. and that's it. Really? And you let it sit, um, you simmer it. You lightly simmer it for about six to eight hours, up to 24 hours. Yep. So it's just kind of drawing out. It is, it's yeah. drawing out. Um, and the goal is to get it really kind of thick and gelatinous. So if you leave mm -hmm. the top off, it's going to evaporate and get kind of that thick. And that shows that all the gelatin is in it. I would think there's super nutrition in no something like that. kidding. Yeah. Uh, Kristen talked about the minerals and the gelatin and the chondroitin yeah. and the amino Luke. acids. I'm talking proline, lysine. Uh, glutamine. These are things that you don't normally get in the diet in any appreciable amount. And I can't even eat normal chicken stock now. It has to be made our it's own, otherwise stock. it's gross. You put yes. the date on it. Bone yes, because I freeze uh, it. You know, I'll make it. I'll make a big Is this batch. a bowl? So if you were making it for Emma Jane, would you pour that in a bowl, heat it up? Uh, you know, I put it in a bottle or okay, a sippy yeah, cup, yeah. and uh, she and I just lightly warm it. You were making it for it. Brad? Would it go in a sippy cup? <laughs> <laughs> Brad gets the bowl. Emma Jane the bottle. No, and he <laughs> talks about that. A bottle with. Bone yes. broth. Wow. Who wow. talks about yes. that? What That's great so cool. nutrition yes. for a child. Yes. These can be added also to flavor, more like a stew. Absolutely. I okay. mean, if you want a little more flavor and get a little more fancy, I have these little um, bags that you can put the um, herbs the and herbs spices. and spices yep. Yep. in, yep. and your just you know. let them all simmer yes. six to eight hours. I love yep. it. Yep. Excellent segment. Thank you Thanks. so much. I graduated when I was 50 years old. I do internal medicine. I'm also board certified in integrated medicine. I'm a fellow in non-invasive cardiology. And my background, I was a pharmacist and I have a doctorate, a PhD in pharmacology. I came here to learn something. When I first read his book, I felt like this is kind of like changing, changing religions. religions. But it's a lifestyle change. It's a learning process. You discover new things all the time. We're, we aren't taught that in medical school. We aren't taught about antifungals. We, we just get the medication. This is used in a vaginal yeast infection. Sometimes you get yeast pneumonia. You have thrush. Not about covers. I use uh, fluconazole, and I'd like to use more of the Nizoral or Sporanox. However, most people are tied to an insurance program that usually don't cover it. So it's nice that in either the swish and swallow or the tablet, or just Diflucan, 200 milligrams a day. It's a two-edged sword. I mean, big pharma is getting bigger. Uh, you know, they're putting restrictions. Um, we go by what's called evidence-based medicine and also pay for service. For example, I have a diabetic who won't take, he won't take a blood pressure pill, a certain one because to protect the kidneys. My reimbursement is less. Uh, that part I say getting worse. This situation I think is awakening the general public and they're going to do more things on their own and I think uh, the organized medicine is stirring them that way because they're paying for less things and making things more expensive. So we're looking for alternative things that are safe. In 10 years I think this will be mushrooming, no pun intended. <laughs> so much sense to me. That makes so much sense that cook the bones, the marrow, etc. No wonder grandma was uh, enabling, you know, relieving a cold. Not as good, of course, as the flu shot, uh, <laughs> but it was nonetheless a treatment for the flu should you get it. We could do a whole show on the flu shot, just the fascinating things we've learned about that. We're not here to tell you not to get the flu shot. We're here today to tell you about old wives tales. Maybe 20 years from now, 50 years from now, they'll be saying, Take a flu shot to prevent the flu, and everybody will just laugh. Okay, <laughs> next one says, or first one in this segment, eat some ginger to quiet an upset tummy. I got a pregnant. Yes, again. Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am so thankful that I have not had to deal with um, morning, sickness. morning sickness at all. So, um, but. Uh, you counseled a lot of pregnant I women. I have, and, and I've heard it works great. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just the raw. Do you ever make carrot juice in the morning and you put all that good stuff in there and you put a piece of ginger about that thick? Oh. Yeah. Well, you know what? We went to a uh, traditional Chinese medical doctor and he had uh, my wife start cutting up ginger, putting it in hot tea. Mm -hmm. And just drinking that. When she had morning sickness? And so, yes. And boy, it works for me too when I have morning sickness. Well, <laughs> or any Even, type of evening sickness. But boy, it's amazing how well that works. Yeah, so, it really yeah, thumbs We up. all give thumbs up yes. to this one. I like that one. Okay, no longer a wives' tale. Gargle salt water to soothe the sore throat. Now, this is something grandma and mom had us all do. We always had sore throats. We were soda pop and cookie and, you know, <laughs> sore throat was just a, a thing everybody got. As a child? Well, we always do apple cider vinegar. Gargle? Uh, yes, okay. gargle the apple cider vinegar. We didn't do it as a kid, but okay. I've started doing it as an adult, yep. and it really, really helps. And then we just drink it down afterwards. Grandma never had you gargle with real thick salt water. You, Kyle? Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. And it always works for me. Um, Roby Mitchell had some yeah. things that he did with the Petri dish, and just hardcore salt and showing how anti-germ it is. But I put a few drops of grapefruit seed extract in it, mm -hmm. not grape seed, but grapefruit mm -hmm. seed extract, and wow, does that knock out a sore throat for me. The salt plus that, plus I put some baking soda in also. I mean, I go all in. Some bacon? Yeah, some bacon, <laughs> nice crisp bacon. No, you know what I, soda. I have done historically is taken some of the skin of the grapefruit itself in a blender mm. where the oils are, delimonene, mm. wow. et cetera. So big time good antimicrobials. Is it bitter? Uh, yeah, it is yeah. bitter. And so when you're done with that, you run a hot bathtub way up to here, you know, and you sit uh -huh. in that and you sweat and you go to bed and you get up That's... and uh, do another show. <laughs> uh, okay, starve a fever, starve a fever, so don't feed a fever, and feed a cold. Yeah, I, I, that's, a, that's a classic one. Of yeah. all the classic wives' tales, I think that one is the one that everybody knows the most. And I just, I can't find anything with it. Yeah. Um, you were talking before the show about how fevers, the fever is there for a reason, yeah. and you're not necessarily trying to get rid of it right out of the gate. I, you know, I can ramble, but honestly, I can't find anything about this one. Yeah, I mean, I've always just believed that the same thing. You let the fever go to a certain point, right. um, so it kills the mm -hmm. virus or whatever. And I'm telling there. you guys, you're so right on. Foods, let that broth you just learned about starve your fever, right? Enhance your immune system, enhance the cells in your body with good nutrition. That, I think, is the best way to starve a fever, actually by giving it food. What's the next one, Scotty? Oh, carrots are good for your eyesight. There's something called vitamin A. Night blindness, uh, I remember in Vietnam, you know, way back, some of the older guys we were working with complained of being blind at night. Mm -hmm. You don't let them go out on patrol, you know. <laughs> but, but the vitamin A in carrots really does seem to help with night blindness. P.S., so many more things. We learned about falcarinol and some of the... Yes. I'm telling you, God made no mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, we make them all. But, but you look at a, at a cucumber or celery or squash and you look at the ingredients in there, jam-packed with nutrition. I mean, it's just, it's not just falcarinol. I love how you said that, Doug, because I think that a lot of times we say, yeah, it's the vitamin A. Yeah. in carrots that's no, doing it. But no. there is a an yeah. orchestra of nutrients inside every food, and we find one little nutrient isolated and say, well, that must be the thing that's causing it to work. Isn't when that it all interesting? works together. How many carotenoids, you know, are oh, there? 54 yeah. or something, and we say beta carotene. Only right. beta, only, boy, the only beta. beta carotene. Right. You know, gosh, good food means good health. And I think the last one, um, Oh. No, no, I'm not cracking them. I can't stand that. If you go like this, you, get, you know, You're it gross. sounds like I'm cracking them, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Cracking your knuckles can cause arthritis. <laughs> um, I can't stand that. Uh, when people sit there and pull their fingers out of whack, that poor chicken. <laughs> yeah, that one. Wait a minute, you cut its arm off. Um, but cra <laughs> cracking knuckles, I don't know if it causes arthritis. I just ask you if you're with me, please don't do it because it gives me the heebie-jeebies. You know? <laughs> me too. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned about <laughs> right. it, no, I don't. Th I think that that is an old wives' tale. I don't think it has anything to do with arthritis. That is a gas being released. Weirdly enough, hand gas. Uh, yeah, hand <laughs> gas. Hand gas. No, I so, can't come over right now. So I've got probiotics hand gas. for your hand. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I think it is a total wives' tale. These are good. Wives' tales. Spare the rod, spoil the child. You're now a mommy of a one-year-old. Yes. That's a wow. Bible thing, not an old wives' tale. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for being Thank on. You. Don't go away. A closing comes up on today's Know the Cause. In um, 1993, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Growing up, I didn't really take care of myself. And then when I started to want to have children, people would come up and say, are you even going to be able to have children? And that would really discourage me. And in about 2005, I was watching Doug Kaufman, and everything just started to change. The sugar got under control, and um, everything just started to come alive for me. I felt better, and um, in 2007, I had my first daughter, and in 2008, a second daughter, and 2012, our third. So we've been blessed. Follow Doug's phase one diet as closely as possible. Olive leaf extract, the oregano oil, caprylic acid was one of the first I ever took. Prayer, of course, that can be done. You need to just, you need to revamp your body to, to prepare itself for pregnancy, and that'll make it easier. A lot of people are still afraid of fat. And I know why that is. Back in the 1980s, there was a mantra that fat makes you fat. And we've since discovered that's really not the case at all. Throughout human history, good fats have been consumed, and all good fats do really, really good things. My three favorite good guy fats, number one, Avocado, a good monounsaturated fat. Number two is fish oil. You need these omega-3 fatty acids. And the third one for me is coconut oil. You need some saturates, in my opinion, some good saturated fats, helping to nourish the brain, helping to nourish the hormonal system. And the other thing about coconut oil is that coconut oil is antifungal. Try these three and feel better soon. And of course, we wouldn't just let you hanging on the end of Know the Cause. By the way, thank you so much for going to our website, for learning more old wives' tales or young husbands' tales, you know, uh, learning about the fungal uh, role in the disease process. Phase one diet, mm -hmm. everything's on there. We have one final one I'd like to go over with you guys because this is a big one. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Kristen, you're a chef. You know, is breakfast the most important meal of you the know, day? No, I think everyone's different. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you're not hungry in the morning, then it's then I wait wanna... for a little longer. Maybe you overate at night and you're not you're not wanting breakfast. Yeah. You know, right thing in the morning. So I think listening to your body is really the most important thing. I don't think you should shove breakfast down your. And throat. Kyle, obviously, you don't listen to your body. What um, What would <laughs> you say about I that? I think that it is, but breakfast does not necessarily mean something you eat at 8 a.m. Yeah. Breakfast can come at 5 p.m. Yeah. It's just the first meal that breaks your fast. But it does mean whole grain. Shut <laughs> up. Oh, don't get me started on this. Thank you, folks, for enjoying the show. 10% as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. Thank you both so much for being here today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.